Hey guys, the Portrait here. For this video, I'm going to slow down the early part and answer a few questions and comments from my last couple of videos. I'm trying to make this more of a regular thing. Before I start, just a note, the more general the question is, the more general my answer has to be for this kind of FAQ, which is usually not that helpful. For example, question, um, how do I get better at drawing? Well, you'll find the proper guidance and then practice a lot. How do I get better at tennis? Well, you find a decent coach and maybe join a club and you practice. Except I just told you nothing you don't already know. But if I can give you answers that can be helpful and not obvious, I will try my best. Usually those are from more specific questions. Also sometimes I get questions that is kind of general but pretty good and valuable like how do I draw realistic hair? Now this is more specific but it, it is not a question that I can answer very quickly because to answer it properly we're talking about structure and volume of the hair, we're talking about detail versus making simplified statement, uh, the common mistakes beginners make when they draw hair, we have to talk about medium and to a certain degree lighting and reflection and not just the accuracy of that but its consistency to the rest of the drawing and you can see how that can be like three videos on its own. Which is why I started the whole Patreon thing, but rest assured, I'm still going to make content for you as much as I can. And thanks to all the comments people make in my videos, they are very encouraging. I appreciate all feedback, including the constructive criticism. I may not be able to uh, respond to everyone, but I generally read all of them, and so thanks to everyone who leave a comment and share my videos. Alright, let's get on with the FAQ. Okay, the first question Paul asks, uh, well, this is really about compressed charcoal and how to blend it. Well, the charcoal needs to be soft and I use my self-made blending tool which is very soft also. So, and I have a video on that. I have a video that teaches you exactly how to make it. Just go to my channel and search for it. I think it's called like how to make your own blending stump. Um, there's also another video on what tools I use which covers a lot of uh, questions you may have. Okay, next question. Eminem asks, Will you like that since you were born or you learned that later? I'm, I'm assuming you mean my uh, obnoxious personality. That's just, that's unfortunately when I was born. No, but seriously, in, in terms of drawing, I taught myself after I graduated from business school. So it's never too late to start learning drawing. Alright, next question. Uh, it's from uh, Amar. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry I butchered your name. Um, so the question is, Compressed charcoal are difficult to erase and uh, I seem to, seem to be able to do it fairly easily and not leave any marks. How do I do it? Okay, so I answered this question in the comments but I think this is a great question so I am going to answer it again here. The key is that I'm using very uh, soft compressed charcoal. So when I leave a dark mark on the paper, I'm actually not using a lot of pressure. Why do I do that? So the charcoal is not so deeply ingrained in the paper which allows uh, the you know the removing or lifting of the charcoal fairly easily. An extreme analogy would be like you know imagine if you have a handful of dust of charcoal, you can put that out on paper, then you can easily remove that by just a puff of air. You know, <laughs> I like compressed charcoal because it is still a, a very dense medium, so I can leave it kind of softly on paper, or I can use more pressure with a blending stump to uh, really press it into paper. But I only do that if I'm sure about the location. Plus, uh, it provides a really nice dark contrast to the paper. Okay, next question from uh, user not available. <laughs> I see what you did there. Why do you smear the charcoal then draw over it? Is it just to darken the white paper you are using? Well, yes, but um, the point is to establish the background and the large tones and structures first, then draw the details on top of that. Um, imagine you're painting a sky, right? Which one's easier? You paint the white clouds or well, clouds are actually technically mostly gray. If you paint the gray clouds first and then draw the blue sky carefully around it or it's easier to draw the entire sky blue and then add the clouds on top of that and then add the white for the highlights and gray for the shadows. You know, It's just easier to just draw the background first. Uh, normally in my old videos I don't do that as often because people like to see the eyes and everything come out first. But lately I've been doing it just a different way. Uh, it's just simply more efficient way to draw. Okay, next question. Okay, this is a pretty common question. Where do I get my music? Because of copyright, I have to buy the license from stock websites. So that's pretty much where I 
get my music from. There are also a few great uh, composers who allow me permission to use their music. Uh, from Dan, do I have any video that is not time-lapsed? Yes, I do have a few real-time videos on my public channel here. I also have a lot of such videos and workshops on Patreon as my token of thanks. Next, we have Mr. Underdog asking, Well, you always favor in my heart. Okay, this is more of a question for very beginners or artists who are new to charcoal. It's mostly about how to protect and preserve the drawing. Yes, there are special art fixative sprays you can buy. My favorite is probably the rewalkable ones, the ones that leave kind of a rough textures even after you finish the spray. The thing about that is that uh, you can draw on it afterwards, but you cannot erase what is covered by the spray. So you have to use a white pencil for highlights. Most time, unless the portrait is absolutely finished, or I'm working on a commission and it's done and I have to ship it out, I generally don't use spray coating, so that I can always tweak my art. You may have heard using hairspray as an alternative, and some hairspray does share similar ingredients. The problem is A, um, the art sprays are designed to be very even in the dispersion, while high hairspray is not. And secondly, uh, the hairspray sometimes contains other chemicals and ingredients like fragrance, conditioning, oil, which is obviously bad for the art. I would say unless you're really that tight on your budget, art spray is not expensive and it gives you a much even coating. And it's much safer if chemistry is not your forte. One thing to keep in your mind is that art spray, even the best quality ones, will change the tone of the drawing slightly. Usually it makes everything a bit darker. And if you have used any white powdered medium in your drawing like white pastel, white charcoal, any spray will dramatically reduce that. Which is one of the reasons I try not to use white charcoal or pastel in my charcoal drawings. And that's the question for today. And if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments and enjoy the rest of the video. Cheers!